Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this video. My name is Sarai Garcia, I'm UCCX engineer from this Cotat Backbone team. Today, in this video, I want to cover a first implementation of the Customer Collaboration Platform Server or CCP integration with UCCX, which actually in previous versions, maybe you used to know it as Social Miner. This integration will help you to enable the chat and email feature to finance agents, which will allow them to have a direct communication with customers via website. This is the agenda of today in this video. We're going to cover the support deployments to establish the installation of the CCP and the general first time CCP configuration in CCX. Given that all this information is documented, all of it is distributed in different documents regarding the subsystem the UCCX. So the goal of this explanation is to be the most control possible for the full configuration. It's important to understand the deployments we are working with before to implement any new features. This is the first one for chat and email. The most functional difference between this is when the customer's website is in a DMC or the limited zone. This one allows it to be open to all HTTPS traffic from the internet and also includes that the CCP and the customer's website share exactly the same domain. On the other hand, in the second scenario, the customer's website is out of this CMC and it's added at a proxy server which translates the domain between the CCP and the website. Also, the CCP should only need to access to this proxy server if it's after a corporate firewall. Once we know the scenario which we are working with, we can download and install the CCP server. This process is pretty similar to other Cisco voice products just like the same UCCX or call manager. You will be able to download the zip files visiting software.cisco.com webpage. I just want to highlight that the UCCX and the CCP servers must be in the same version. This also includes the ES patch. Now the download is done, we can proceed with the configuration or the integration with the UCCX. In this section, I'll cover some sort of steps which must be implemented in these specific places. The allow list, the certificate exchange, the configuration in the UCCX administration, do some changes in the layout in the finance administration, and basic knowledge to create a chat and email CSQs. As default, you won't be able to access the CCP administration page. You will see a completely blank page. This is because of security CCP feature, the whitelist. The administrator will be able to manage this one controlling the access of different endpoints inside of environment. The administrator can add and delete the IP addresses of these endpoints, which will have access to the CCP administration page. To take effect of any changes you have done inside the whitelist, the Cisco Tomcat service must be restarted. And after that, you will be able to access the CCP from the IP addresses you just add to this list. Now that you can access, you must proceed with the certificate exchange. The certificate management is handled in the same page of the UCCX and CCP servers. In the Cisco Unified Operating System Administration or OS Administration in the security menu. Each server has different certificate. And in this case, you're going to focus on the Tomcat. This one must be downloaded from each server. And normally, you can identify it with the same command name than the server's FQDN. And here's when you exchange the certificates. In case of IHA environment, and summary must be like this. The CCP Tomcat cert must be uploaded in both UCCX clusters, and the UCCX Tomcat certs from both clusters must be uploaded to the CCP server. All uploaded as Tomcat trust certificate purpose. Every time you do a change in the certificate site to take effect in the UCCX system, the service must be restarted in the same maintenance window. And as a best practice, start with the CCP server, then the UCC Publisher, and at the end, the subscriber. Of course, waiting until all services go as a started state before to restart the next server. Now, we move on to UCC X administration page. Here's when you configure the CCP to be recognized by the UCC X. In the CCP configuration menu, you add the CCP's IP address or FQDN, and including the administrator credentials. A very important note is that you must have premium licenses to enable the agent's chat and email feature. If you do not have these licenses, 
not even the chat and email subsystem menu will appear. The next step is to enable the chat and email gadgets and the tab for the finesse agents. In the default layout in finesse administration page, there are some commented sections which has the label of use for a web chat and email. Those specific gadgets must be uncommented and in the tab section must be uncommented and also add the CCP safe end in the gadget. Of course, Cisco Tag recommends performing all these steps in a maintenance window. However, the finesse administration part not necessarily needed. So in case that you do the changes, the agents can just sign out and come back in to take effect. And after this, each agent must accept the certificates in the Manage Chat and Email tab. Actually, agents can have access to the chat without necessarily have the email feature. But of course, we need to add this feature also into the customer's website. When you create a chat CSQ, Cisco offers chat widgets with all the requirements you need, which creates an XML code to add it to the backend code. Additionally, it's possible to have a Facebook Messenger chat, which it is available since version 12.5 is YouTube. To enable it, we must have a Facebook application and an access token. These are created in the Facebook developer's webpage. You can create a specific CSQs to manage the emails. To do so, you must have access to an email server. More specifically, Gmail and Microsoft Office 365 are the supported. Something like the Facebook Messenger, you need the email accounts and the authentication tokens, which, depending on the email server, you will have different options of authentication types. If you're implementing Gmail, you can use BASIC or OAuth 2.0 authentication. However, if you're working with Office 365, BASIC authentication for reply emails, SMTP, is the only one Cisco offers. These are the reference where you will be able to find the documentation of all the information I just explained, and I hope you could find this video really useful. Thank you so much for watching, and feel free to reach out to Cisco Tech Support for any questions or further assistance you need.